Hi everyone and welcome to this new video which is devoted to the diet. Actually it is the second part of video 20 in which I already said Nile does not give a particular diet for this or that disease since they most often have one and the same cause, namely the deterioration of the quality of the blood and the blood circulation. Health, strength and resistance exist only where the blood is rich and it is the role of the food to make it rich, but also of the drinks, which are considered water applications by night. They are actually the detergent and do a similar job inside as the port is outside, namely the washing. We'll first see the, what, the, what is the ideal night that gives health with night. Next, as in the past, a few people asked me for details about my personal diet. I now keep my promise and I'll compare it to Nipe's ideal diet. And I try to say what's specific about it. At the end of the video, I'm going to revisit the portis because one of my subscribers, Malta, did an interesting suggestion, namely putting a cling film around the portis. This is actually a very good idea, so we'll see that more closely at the end of the video. So for night strength and resistance, or shortly health, are given to us by nitrogen, that is protein in the food. Besides three groups, those rich in protein, those poor in protein and those without protein. While discussing them, he answers in parallel three questions and from which the ideal diet will emerge. These questions are still open, still unresolved. One, omnivorous or vegetarian diet. Two, eating raw or eating cooked. And three, about the drinks, what to drink, how much to drink, uh, a lot or a little, and even more important, when to drink, during the meals or apart from meals. Group one includes milk and cheese, legumes, meat and fish. They have a lot of protein and uh, they are a bit like the cement and the mortar of a house. Uh, they are essential to our health. But, but, but. Concerning milk, he says, it provides protein and a treasure of nutrients, but it is often poorly supported. In this case, you cannot drink a lot of it, if at all. This is even more true for cheese. It is a processed food containing salt and causes heat in the stomach, that is, inflammation. He advises against. Meat and fish also contain a lot of protein and other nutrients, but as for meat, naip has only lean meat in mind, and even solely beef. So also you should not eat a lot of meat because it develops too much heat, inflammation, acidification of the body with all the unfortunate consequences that ensue, faster wear of organs, eruptions and so on. So much so that one cannot eat solely meat for a long time without vegetables. Nipe also emphasizes another big problem with meat, the freshness. He says it is never fresh. Often it has six to seven days and does not have a very appetizing aspect. To counter this, salt and other spices are added, which have the effect of making it even more harmful. Many foods already contain salt naturally, so you shouldn't add any more. He also says that at the time of his childhood he always ate without salt, whether it be potatoes and milk preparations. 
Night has studied animals and I want to read an excerpt now about his findings because it really makes one thing. Nipe says a bit of salt is needed for the food to get decomposed, but many foods already contain salt naturally and so no need to add more. And he goes on, I translate, salt has the effect of gnawing and decomposing. Those who consume a lot of salt can easily damage their stomach and intestines. I did a lot of experiences with salt on cattle. In dairies, they sell the food a lot, so that it decomposes more quickly. I've also read in many books and newspapers uh, that one must feed the animals with a lot of salt. And one has to come to say a pound of salt gives a pound of fat. I followed this advice and I fed the animals with salt, but I realized that all the animals fed with salt did not live long. The cows could not have calves or they were giving birth prematurely. A butcher also assured me that we could see by the intestines if the animals had been fed with salt, with little or with much. When, uh, when the animals had been fed with much salt, the intestines tore themselves so easily that one could not use them to make sausages, because by appropriating them they were pieced. When I wanted to do this experiment, I was obliged to agree with this opinion. I also noticed that when I gave little or no salt to the cattle, they were in better condition and lived longer. So I wrote this in the 19th century and I don't dare to think of what is in meat nowadays and the scandals in slaughterhouses follow each other. As for legumes, peas, beans, uh, lentils, they nourish and strengthen health without the disadvantages of meat or milk. By combining them with bread, you can stay healthy. These plants are preferable to meat. Naib says it was the people's food at the time of his childhood and he regrets that they have been replaced with meat. So Naib is clearly in favour of a vegetarian diet. In the second group are the cereals, wheat, spelt, rye, barley, oats. They contain protein, but to a lesser extent. Uh, we must eat a little more. Same for potatoes and eggs. In this group are also the other vegetables and fruits. They contain almost no protein anymore. Also, night warms those who eat only vegetables and fruits. One may expect a quick deterioration of health. He knew many people who ate a lot of vegetables, but they all lacked fresh colors and resistance. And when they became corpulent, they became anemic and had difficulty in breathing. Often that soon followed. Furthermore, vegetables alone are bland and they must be mixed with other dishes. Fruit best to eat raw and with skin because the skin is exposed to sunlight and the influence of air and so contain all the strength. So whenever possible eat raw and do not count on the, on the sole vegetables and fruits for strong health. In the third group we find the fats. They are completely devoid of protein. They contain nutrients and are necessary for assimilation, but they do not strengthen our resistance. It is, uh, if the milk is full of protein, the butter is completely devoid of it, recalls Naip. Ditto for the oils. As for the drinks, what to drink, how much, a lot or a little, and when to drink, during the meals or apart from meals. 
Water, the only drink available in nature, is the best to drink. But some advise to drink two to four liters of water per day, not nipe, on the contrary. We can drink when we are thirsty, but no need to drink more. And we should drink apart from meals, for otherwise it dilutes the gastric juices and leaves the body taking with it the gastric juice to the great detriment of the organism and especially by disturbing the digestion. More liquid is the food ball and more aqueous is the blood formed and the slower is the digestion. Nive himself hardly drank two sips of water at lunch and then nothing during the day. He writes this on page 78 of his book, Thus Shalt Thou Live. To people who are always thirsty or to constipated persons, he advised to drink every half hour a spoonful of water of some herbal or some herbal tea. This calms the thirst and it regulates the gut motility. And in this way, we dilute the gastric juices no more than necessary. As for the other drinks, coffee contains quinine. It is a stimulant that weakens the body and exhausts the nervous system. It is the murderer of humanity, says Snipe, since it removes the forces and the health and a bridge's life. Ditto for tea and chocolate. Beer, wine, brandy are hardly better and should be used in moderation, one glass per day. Malt, barley, wheat, rye coffees should be preferred. So to sum up for Nipe, the ideal diet was that of his childhood, based on legumes and cereals, little or no salt and little drinks. Concretely, legumes, potatoes, sauerkraut and some vegetable leaves, milk preparations, oatmeal and so on. This diet has already been replaced with meat. Much more salt and water was replaced with spirits. Okay, we'll now take a look at my diet and I will answer the three questions and I'll try to highlight the differences between Nipe's ideal diet and mine. First question, omnivorous or vegetarian diet? I am now rather vegan. In 2015 I eliminated all dairy products and in 2016, I eliminated also meat. I replaced them with legumes, seitan, tempeh and tofu, all very high in protein, as well as herbal infusions containing protein too, like nettle and oat straw. I make my vegan treats myself, I drink plant-based milk, I still eat some mussels and some small fatty fish from time to time. Uh, I eat only cereals with soluble fiber, such as rye or barley in uh, rusty cloves and also a bit rice and oats. I avoid, I avoid as much as I can insoluble fibers which are irritating for the bowel and also spices and condiments. Two, eating raw or cooked. Because of my sensitive bowel, I eat my vegetables cooked and often mashed, with the exception of some sweet salads, which I can eat raw, like lettuce. juice. Otherwise, I make juices without fibers. Ditto for fruits. Most often I make juices except for some fruits uh, like uh, banana or a pear. So as you can see, what is specific in my diet is the absence of unsoluble fibers. Is this vegan diet decisive? Well, in my humble opinion, it isn't, 
Since at the time of the left index finger healing, I was still eating meat and dairy products and this didn't impede the finger from healing. What about the drinks? If something may have been decisive, then it's probably here on the level of the drinks. But first, a word of my drinking habits. I was one of those who drink a lot during meals. It has been so since my early childhood. Uh, my mother already told me when I was still a child that I drank too much during the meals and that it was not good. At some point in my life, almost 20 years ago, the problems started and happened what Naib could have predicted. Inflamed bowel with diarrhea and so on. I have to say, at that time, fiber and whole grains were praised, as well as drinking much water. And I followed all this good advice, but it was too much for my sensitive bowel. It took me, obviously, some time to find the cause of this sudden uh, intestinal disorder. And I even had to start uh, keeping a food diary. And doing so, I learned the effects of food, not only on my gut, but also on my finger osteoarthritis, because I really wrote down everything in my diary. One day, while reading a book in which the author warned against drinking during meals and advised to wait at least one hour around meals, I became aware of my error. I started drinking apart from meals and would you believe it solved the problem almost overnight. So to me drinking apart from meals is a golden rule and I still have to stick with it right now. So should you ever have an, uh, an inflamed bowel just try this simple rule before anything else and eat as dry as possible. Naib says that when he ate soups, he always made them thick with bread. To come back to the question we are dealing with, is there anything in my diet that has favored the healing of osteoarthritis in my fingers? So everything that I noticed as relevant has already been summarized in video 6, but I could now add my way of eliminating, which is more than optimal. I'm never constipated and even if I want, it's enough for me to drink while eating and it's solved. So combined to the herbal infusions, which contribute to the elimination as they act as a true detergent, I can only repeat what I already said. They for sure have contributed for a good part to the healing. Linden first, I still think it has played a big part in the time of my left index spontaneous healing. Linden is not only a sudorific but also a diuretic. I drank it apart from meals, 500 milliliters of linden plus one liter of water uh, during the day. Since 2015 I have gradually replaced it with oat straw and nettle and osteoarthritis continues to evolve well. He said, I drink, I drink this cold while I drank linden most often warm. And I'm inclined to believe it is better to drink warm, especially in the winter, and cold in the summer. One big difference between Naip and me is he gave drinks only in small quantities, a spoon per half hour, while I drink much more. And I noticed the quantity makes a difference. There was less activity in my finger when I drank less. I must 
but I never really tried to drink in small quantities like prescribed by night. Maybe it might work for you. So to summarize, there are three big differences between Nab's diet and mine. First, no dairy and no meat. Two, no insoluble fibers. And three, I drink as advised by Nipe, apart from the meals, but I drink a lot. And he always advises to drink only small quantities. One last little addition for those who might be interested. Oat straw and nettle are very nutritious herbal infusions. They both contain protein and they both are resolving. And it's when I started drinking nettle infusion that I gradually lost the taste of meat. In two months my conversion to veganism was done. And it didn't cost me any effort. Nettle contains everything one needs, except uh, from the vitamin B12, but this can be found in nutritional yeast or in plant-based milk, for instance. Nettle is that prevention infusion as it eliminates uric acid in the blood. It is the herbal tea for energy, a true concentrate of strength and resistance. In short, it is the herbal tea of health. Now I've used it a lot and herbalist Susan Wheat will tell you everything about it if you research on the internet. We will now briefly revisit the poultice. One of my subscribers, Malka, suggested putting a clean film around the poultice and she treats small bumps. For sure, this is a very good idea. I'd like to make two remarks. First remark with regard to small bumps. As a first layer, I would use tin compress, a tin compress rather than absorbent paper. So for instance like this one. Why? Well as we have already seen the problem is actually a, mainly a problem of accessing the spot, of being able to access the spot and so it is a matter of making sure that the target spot is wrapped well. <clears throat> and a tin compress will do this much better as it can be tightened much better. While paper can tear or stick or not stick everywhere evenly because it is less supple. This one is cotton, of course linen will be even much better. Second remark is with regard to the cling film. It has two big advantages. One, it keeps the poultice warm much longer, so the resolution can continue an uninterrupted way, which is great. Wrapped well and dry as it is with a cling film, it lets you easily sleep with it. I did so and noticed that in the morning the poultice was still quite hot. So this is really very great. This said, keep in mind that the substances must come out. And to make this happen, the outer layer must be as warm and dry as possible, like the sun. We have seen in a previous video the image of the sun. To give another image of the magic of the poultice, other than the previous image of the sun, think of how one removes a stain of fat from a garment. One puts <coughs> blotting paper or several layers of absorbent paper on the stain and then an iron over it. Not too hot. The heat melts the fat and the blotting paper will absorb it. So the sock must be really warm, preferably a woolen or a polyester sock. Hmm? Um, and think of winding it several times. So if you, <coughs> if this is the stock, you turn it that way. Then you can, for instance, turn the stock this way and then this way. 
I insist upon this because it, if the outer layer becomes too wet, as there is plastic around, the wet won't evaporate anymore, and so it won't absorb anymore. That's why it's a good idea to wrap it several times, to wind it several times, as to make it as thick as possible. In any case, I tried. This worked really well. This is a stocking. I bought new ones. 50% wool and 50% other fibers. I think it's sponge because they say the soul is in sponge. So that's why I personally like to push the poultice into a cushion covered with a warm polyester plate. And in any case, I was obliged to do so because at the time of video two, I worked only with what I had on hand, and that was absorbent paper and cotton stockings instead of woolen. So that's why I'm really very glad with Malka's suggestion. To be honest, I was hoping such proposals for improvements. And being able to sleep with an efficacious poultice is a big step forward in the treatment. Future will tell. Of course, I'll keep you informed. And well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening and till the next video. Bye-bye.